<laughs> I, f I forgot to change the name. Okay, but uh, I really want to play Soul Cauldron and Elves. Uh, I think Elves is a pretty exciting place for the card. Turning um, turning anything into an Elvish Archdruid or a Zuri is very cool. Turning your stuff into getting back uh, Heritage Druid, which is an important engine piece, is very cool. You have all of these like token tokens like from Warmaster and Dwayne's Elite that can turn into like relevant creatures via Agatha's Soul Cauldron. That's exciting. Tybar mills cards into your graveyard for you to find with Agatha's Soul Cauldron. And very specifically, putting activated abilities on um, Nettle Sentinel is very powerful. If you can, even just turning Nettle Sentinel into an Elvish Mystic is very powerful, where you're just going to be tapping for green, cast a spell, and tap over and over and over again. Um... One thing I was kind of unsure was... I, actually, I think... No, I think I'm more sure. I, this deck actually needs a second Realm Walker in the main when I was messing around with it earlier. I, went, I wasn't sure if I wanted 4th Elite or a second Realm Walker, but you just, I think you just need the second card advantage uh, Alpha to Court for pretty badly. Could even be, could even be right to play, like, the third. Um, we will play the third, actually. Just because th this build is... Um, this build is not playing the two mana Lord anymore that when you pay a green draw a card. It's really sad because that card was like a huge upgrade for elves. We, I think we 5 would at least once with that one. Um, maybe twice, but but uh, the, the problem is like that card is so bad in the Bowmaster world. Like it's a, it, it's a two mana elf that just dies to Bowmaster ETB. And if you're always just drawing a card, Bowmasters are just going to slaughter your elves. So like you just, you just can't really play that card anymore. The feedback is elves is top deck format plays fury bow magic and board. Yeah, I'm not, elves is not a good deck probably still, but uh, I, <laughs> I I agree that elves is still weak to the fury bow master meta game. But I just want I wanted to play cauldron in it. I was gold fishing a little bit. It was looking pretty good. I agree though. Michael the seventh. Thank you. Ranger, not dead after all. They take, just take the one drop, sure. All right, so let's get a tapped Overgun Tomb and hope for the best. Uh, you know, so, sometimes scam players do keep grief with like not a lot of follow up. Um, Ragavan is definitely one card here that we could be okay against, although they're gonna get to hit us with it at least, hit us with it at least once. But if we if we get to like go Warmaster into Dwynen's Elite, we're gonna be in pretty good shape here. But our Warmaster needs to live. If I draw a land, we I guess we should go Tyvar minus four. Oh, sorry, this is Nettle Sentinel, not, not Heritage Jira. Never mind. Okay, they hit their own Dwynen's Elite. I suppose best case scenario is they cast it. Okay, that's the that's the best case scenario right there. Um, and then I it's it's it costs me two life to do this, but I think I should be playing Quarry Ranger here so I can play a three drop next turn. That feels like um priority here. So they find their second land. They did have access to two mana last turn and weren't able to do much with it. So let's see what blocking like this looks like. I think it looks pretty correct. We are gonna go down to four because of the not dead after all. It's even untapped, huh? So they probably take Tyvar, if I had to guess. Tyvar taken. That's an interesting draw. We'll be dead to a lightning bolt, I guess. I can only court for one, which doesn't help me a ton here. So we're, we're maybe gonna wait on the cord. They fetch a basic swamp, so they probably have a blood moon in their hand. Although I would think they probably would just want to draw a land. I don't know. Kind of a weird timing on that fetch. 
My opponent has said, hey, big fan, which means they're going to have the best possible turn. Is it, at least that's usually what this means. But GLHF to you, my friend. It triggers your token maker? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it just could be correct to like go for Realmwalker or Azuri here, maybe. So I think we block like this. See if my opponent does anything. They do nothing. Let's let's get another Corian Ranger in play. This this is going to allow me to um, untap my Elvish Archdruid next turn because they're going to kill this one. So I want I want another one. Also kind of gets my Elf count back to where it was. So being a big fan of you makes players have better turns. I yeah I guess so. I I don't know. There's there's def there's definitely been a trend on this channel of my opponents going hey Spike big fan into best possible turn, which is, you know, not a crime, but <laughs> just an observation. Um, okay, so we can go tap for four mana. This Archdruid is minus one mana, basically. I, I mostly need to decide, am I gonna go Cord for Realmwalker, or am I gonna try to kill my opponent with Elvish Warmaster here? So if I go four mana down to one Elvish Archdruid, untap, I can't, I can't replay this, so I'll have a total of five seven more mana which is enough to activate yeah we're gonna we're gonna cord for realm walker i don't think attacking matters a ton here so we'll just tap like this okay so make a green untap my archdruid play an azuri and, you know, Agatha Soul Cauldron does have the downside, I guess, of not being an elf. Um, but also, most mostly mostly just not very realistic to try to win this turn. We're going to win if they don't top deck Lightning Bolt. And if they top deck Lightning Bolt, we're going to lose. If they kill my Azuri, we at the very least can use this to give uh, Azuri next turn. What do you think about adding list? I, I hate the idea of playing Grist in this deck. I think it is not a good idea. It is just, like, not what this deck is wanting to be doing like sacking your elves to kill something sometimes i know it's good with cauldron but we already have 13 three drops um i would like i would not like to play grist over any of these three drops dino got resident evil 2 no way i was watching dino this morning and he was like uh, talking about, about how, how he's about to quit the <laughs> the run that's awesome very exciting okay so roughly That's so exciting. Congrats to him. It's not I missed it. I guess I'll watch it on YouTube. But yeah, when I started the stream this morning, Dino was like, I think I'm just going to stop running our Resi 2. He's, he said he wasn't having fun with it anymore. That's so cool. Yeah, Resi 2 is a really fun game. I, I played it for the first time this year. So I've been ex I've been happy to watch Dino run it. Okay, points on the model 6. So are we. Hard to mulligan to 5 in this matchup, so I think I'll just keep this. Uh, you want the third mark against like Murktide and Prowess and Burn. Um, you could you could play it in this matchup too. I, I think it would be okay. Mark in this deck for anything besides Fury. Yeah, Fury, Lightning Bolt, Unholy Heat, Orcish Bowmaster, Syrian Blaze, Lava Dart. So Interesting for them to go after value three drops here rather than my elf probably means they have a removal spell for the elf which you know say la vie that's what i get for registering elvish mystic i suppose we won game one though nettle sentinel blocks the bowmaster pretty well we're actually like if we just draw a land in the cu next couple draws okay didn't get it on this draw but it, yeah sentinel blocks here elite can trade for grief obviously they can't have much follow-up but there, there are not like too many decks in modern that are like that can mulligan and then get griefed into bowmastered and just not care about a follow up, I suppose. Um, I, I can't block. I need I need this elf to be into play for Dwinin's Elite. They can have their. Uh, okay, I guess I guess if they cast this, they only get to attack with it once. I guess maybe if they hit another green spell off Ragavan. I did not draw a second land. We go to game. Sadly, Elves got no playable cards in Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Right, game turn to play. How crazy would Glimpse be in today's modern? It would be like... 
not too overpowered, but it would be a really obnoxious card, I think, to have legal, since turns that involve, uh, involve Glimpse... What is it? Glimpse the... Not Glimpse the Unthinkable. Glimpse of Nature. Turns that involve Glimpse of Nature take forever. <laughs> Forever. It's just it's it's not a, it's not the kind of card I think you want in band. All right. See if they take my mark. They take my court of calling. So we are now uh, fury proof. Lightning bolt can target me. Bowmaster can target me. I, it did seem like they read Mark of Asylum, so maybe their hand is just like all fatal pushes or something. But you always get to kind of relax a little bit when you have a Mark of Asylum in play. Okay, Dothy Voidwalker, which is kind of nice against my Tyvar. And they're just natty evoking. Okay. So I doubt that they'll take my Tyvar since the minus is turned off, so they just take Cord again. Sure. You know, we might struggle to get something going here, but we have a lot of protection from the cards they can have. And, you know, we're a land or an alpha away from casting Archdruid, which is protected from a lot of their interaction, and their clock isn't that fast. Um, no way for me to play Tyvar first. Not that I would really, really care to. Definitely hoping to dodge a terminate, I guess. Okay. I suppose we take that. Kind of surprised they didn't try to like save that for revolt. Maybe they just have something else. Oh, okay. Sure. Always, always the problem with like hate cards against scam is like it just there's just very little, very rarely something that is good against the entirety of their deck. Um, that being said, Realm Walker is a pro our, our best draw here by a lot. I I don't does wait does the Tyvar two the the Tyvar minus two might actually work through Void Walker. Can we get a judge on that? Mill two then return a creature with Man Value two or less from your graveyard to battlefield. Yeah, I think no. If it's in among the milled cards, it, it that usually works right. Okay, so let's go. Give me a close one. Beating this game would be exciting. They discard Engineered Explosives, which is disheartening to say the least. Oh, never mind. It, it explosives is bad against the, the Zuri region. Never mind. Heartening again. Although they could have also killed the Mark of Asylum, but it would have also killed their Voidwalker. So let's shuffle the non alpha away, I suppose. Also, a card bad against Voidwalker. Um, and then I can mill from the top of my library here. It's obviously like just horrible that I have had these bricks on top and not able to get the ball rolling at all when I'm dead to a Bowmaster or a Lightning Bolt now. <laughs> and then I can't, I can't, can't guess that. Okay. Um, yeah, so going to be very difficult to present lethal next turn. Maybe not impossible with Tyvar in play. The static ability, obviously, kind of nice. Yeah, but there, there's the bolt. Tough game. Obviously, tough matchup. Card, Sh Shaper Sanctuary is such a fucking trap. That card is awful. It just does not. <laughs> against them, but the problem is, like, trying to beat them with your sideboard is tough when, you know, trying to beat a discard deck with your sideboard is tough. Cauldron Zerda? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a half-cooked idea, but there could be something there. Rosie Grist and Cauldron. I don't know why you'd be interested in playing Rosie in a... Oh, is, is it because it combos with... It's infinite with Grist? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Most of these, like, Grist-Cauldron combo ideas just... Are, they're just, like, Yogmoth, but worse is almost... It, it feels like almost all, we, all the ideas that we've heard for it so far is Yogmoth, but worse. Alright, definitely want to be Elfin here.
lot of creature combos for like Yawa Wars. Yeah, for sure. For for sure. Like the the Heliod deck like has some real reasons to not be Yawgmoth. Like you get to play a lot of good interaction. Um, so that that one's kind of an exciting like new creature combo deck that seems to be good. Um, but yeah, like this this is definitely this is this this is really what's keeping creature combo decks out of modern. It's not Fury. It's it's that your creature combo deck is going to be worse than Yawgmoth. Uh, basically, period. Although, there are creature combat decks in modern, just not... Maybe not the one you want to play. Guess they just have the one ones? Not attacking for lethal, but does not seem like my opponent is going to be able to untap and kill me here either. My opponent has forgotten to program their their, their stone forge mystic, which makes it harder too. You get Kiki, Cauldron Zerta, need the hammer out of shell, maybe Kiki. Yeah, I, I I have we have a Kiki. Well, I don't not with Zerta, but I'm also I'm also working on the Aether Vial Kiki Jiki deck with Soul Cauldron. This is what I've been trying to cook off stream. It is certainly still something I'm working on, but um, okay, this is probably a matchup where you don't want the cauldrons. Something I'm still working on, but one that has been kind of cool so far. And then because they don't have a lot of removal, we can go down on Realm Walkers too. What are the best cyber cards against Bean? Um, that depends on what deck you're playing. Um, but, you know, Nar Narset, Narset, Shieldred, Bowmasters, like these kind of cards that punish them for drawing a lot of cards. Yeah, Fiddlebender Soul Cauldron, that's also been on my sticky note for a while. There's there's just, there is so much to be doing in Modern right now. It is it is truly a really exciting time. Um, that, that That's all my sticky note. Um, there's, there's a lot to be doing at the moment. Zerda is free. Uh, no, Urza Saga, Urza Saga and Imperial Recruiter in that deck do not allow you to play Zerda. If it was free, I would be playing it already in the in the deck. What is Rekko Sage doing in the art? Hmm. Seems like killing a golem of some kind that's like reaching out for it. Pure Sight Mirror Cauldron? Yeah, I'm kind of like off Pure Sight Mirror combo, but. Grinning Ingus with Cauldron. No, but like a full Fulminator Mage Cauldron is also something I really want to try. Like being a bit more in on that interaction. There's there's a there's a lot to do with Cauldron. There's a lot to there's we also have like this the I, I I want to start off with the blue red storm deck at some point this week. Like like we we played we played four matches on stream in between rounds of the challenge yesterday, or not yesterday, the um during during the challenge. And the deck was really good. The deck the deck was looking really good. Like the ring the ring and storm, I know it, it just sounds like such a like, oh ha ha. Put the ring in everything spike, but uh, it's 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 actually it's actually just crazy in the deck. All right, if you got a protection spell, you got a protection spell. I don't know. I'm not sure what I'm pitching. Maybe the heritage ruin. Um, just like the fact that you could ritual into it turn two, it's like a proactive card draw spell you can play. That it's a proactive card draw spell you can play that buys you time. It's like a good it's like good non creature engine. That, that that like that you just need so much it just does everything and also storm is kind of well positioned with omnath um taking uh kind of taking control of the metagame again also playing cards with agatha yeah i i also don't want to buy agatha's soul cauldrons yet <laughs> they're so expensive they're also going to be like popular in edh but i i, I still haven't bought any but I'm gonna be keep brewing them for a while. Okay, so we can at least court for one next turn. That's why I hate Dental Sentinel. Yeah. At the very least, we're like super ahead. <laughs> I don't know. We you know we kept the hand not because it was like a functional elf hand because we had force of negation against Hammer. They pitch the Rex Age. Kind of greedy if they ha do somehow have a protection spell. Pitch the Azuri then. A 
deck goes like a proof of scales. Yeah, if you go, if you type deck, it'll be linked to the Moxfield, which has all of our decks. Thank you, Moxfield. We love you. Um, okay, so if I st I guess I no longer really care about courting for. You're gonna want to maybe find a. Realmwalker Missouri. Attack too. Archangel of Thune could be Boromir. I don't know what the fuck that is. Archangel of Thune. You're talking about the, the white card. Don't, don't play Archangel of Thune though. Play Elishnorn. Don't, don't just play the super weak card because it combos in the deck. Just like the deck. The deck doesn't doesn't need to combo more than it does. It's a it's 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 like a Splinter Twin style. Play good cards, combo eventually. Threat of the combo matters a lot. Uh, Ranger Captain protect the combo. It's not. It's like it's not like just be like you you you, do, you don't want to build it any more in than it is at the moment, in my opinion. Hmm. I think I just get. I mean, getting Realm Walker or Azuri, both of these are effectively going to win. I think the Realm Walker. Has the higher chance of impacting this current board, which probably matters a bit more. Also get Collector Oof. Realm Walker is certainly the funnest. Okay. Nothing on top, get to attack for eight though. Bormir is pretty good. Yeah, Bor Bormir is probably fine. Like, I, the deck already has eight three drops, though. I don't know that. You know, this is also like Spike. Here's a three drop. Here's a five drop. No suggestions for what to cut. The deck is like, the main deck is like. If I ever do another trophy race, I want to do a trophy sprint this year where we do like one week where I try to get as many as possible. But but a big part of the reason why the trophy race was so good last time was that there was no competitive magic. There were no tournaments. It was COVID. It was before organized play came back. There was just nothing to do, so like having having just making something to play at, in that environment was really nice. But Pro Tour is back. There's tournaments to play all the time. Shit's good right now. So you know, there's fun out there. We don't really need to make our fun anymore. Suspends so a rift bolt. I think I play the Arch Druid. I'm okay if they Rift Bolt it. Just, you know, make, make, making them use your burn on their creatures is like an okay to race burn. Is Yeah, yeah, is, yeah Leaf Crown Visionary is so sad because that card was really good in the Elves deck. It was a huge part of the reason why, like, you had a chance to win against Scam to pre Bowmaster, but you just, like, you, like, actually can't register that card anymore. There are some cards that are bad against Bowmaster you can register. Not that, Not that one, though. It's like, you just like can't play it against a deck with Bowmaster. Uh, GG's Clover. You just play Realm Walker. We're gonna have to shuffle the, the this away because we, we're out of basic forest. We only have two basic forests. We can't be fetch shocking, I think. Can you put a couple on the sideboard? Well, putting them in the sideboard for the grindy matchup sucks when one of the grindy matchup is scam. That's just not. Uh, one of our best draws would probably be Agatha's Soul Cauldron here. How do you play Dorks with Bowmaster and Ren? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, nobody said this deck goes good against Bowmaster and Ren. But at the very least, the problem with playing Leaf Crown Visionary in the Bowmaster world is you can't draw cards with it against Bowmaster. The Bowmaster is just going to mow your, mow your board down while you're uh, playing your elves. Over to another court of calling on top, so we can probably win in two turns. It's yet to be seen if that's going to be fast enough. I think I'm just going to pass.
Not every deck is Bowmaster deck. I know that, but it's just like there's there's a difference between like a card being kind of weak to Bowmaster and like the fact that like one Bowmaster just beats your entire deck because your card draw engine is Leaf Crown Visionary. You know, I don't know that. And also, like we now have the theory is that we have Agatha's Soul Cauldron as a new good useful tool that's occupying the spot that like that Leaf Crown Visionary would have passed would have would have occupied before. Why no attacks holding up for court? Yeah, I'm gonna court for two, I think. I can't court for three. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I needed to tap this for I need to tap this for green. I totally like made a mental note for it, then totally forgot. Yeah, we, we could have we, sh we sh could have tapped the Elvish Mystic for a green to not <laughs> get domed for uh, five there. Soul Avenger with the eleven. Thank you, thank you. Next time. Now I wonder if my opponent like attacks with Goblin Guide if we chump block because we have Cauldron. Probably not. Yeah, I don't think so. Okay, that's good news with the cauldron game plan. Just play our cauldron here. And paper would it be assumed you tap the mystic for mana? Well, it would be like you would you would tap you would tap everything, and then your rolling vortex opponent would be like, "How did you tap?" And then at that point, you realize, "Oh, I need to do this." So it's it's kind of like it's kind of like with Cavern of Souls, you can't really you can't really get anybody with it, despite probably deserving to get people with it, if that makes sense. Let's go Tybar minus. Okay, another Heritage Druid. So I'm gonna get a little bit more. It's okay, I guess. Let's see where these rift bolts go. I think we'll go ahead and use the cauldron here, but mostly so that future elves all have the heritage druid's ability. Kind of want them to kill the Azuri here. We have the Cauldron in play, and my life total ain't uh, ain't that high. So I'm gonna attack them for two, untap the Heritage Druid with Tyvar. Um, okay. Untap the Heritage Druid with Tyvar. Play Spell Skite, which can potentially save us, you know, one life every every uh, Phyrexian activation. Matthew, happy four years. Welcome back. I am doing well. Hope you are too. Probably cashing in Tyvar next turn. We'll see what happens. Yeah, sorry, we, we just let this go, right? If I spell sky, I still take I still take three. I'm just dead to one more bolt. Oh, I could I could have paid uh, I could have paid uh, any color because that that's actually a little bit of a combo, huh? I guess I'll turn spell Skite into creature with a counter on it. There's a realm walker. Let's just cash this in, I guess. Maybe could have played realm walker first. You might want to do something else. There's a. Nettle Sentinel, which we can turn into Heritage Druid or and or Elvish Mystic. Let's just go ahead and cast this first. Elf. Okay, so 
I guess we can't we we we, we can't really like mill over an archdruid here. So let's let's turn the nettle sentinel into the Elvish Mystic ability here. Oh, um. This doesn't have haste. I wonder if that's why I can't tap for a green. Okay, it says it it says here. Does it have too many abilities? You don't have three elves. Yeah, but I was I was I I you right, right. I, I just have to cast a Dwine's Leap, but I this needed to have not summoning sickness. But I was just a little confused. Because I didn't see the option to activate the ability. Like, don't you usually see it? Maybe you can only see it if it's like a legal activation. I think that's probably what's happening here. So now we get to pass with double blue spell skite activation up. Triple blue, because this could tap for yeah, this could tap for a green. Not that three would really ever matter. Yeah, I was just confused because I didn't see it like on the card, but it's fine. So we're dead to Boros Charm. We've already played one. Dead to Lava Spike, plus another Lava Spike. You know, targeted removal. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Quarian activation. Uh, well, we could have cast the Tyvar. I think I think we're just like passing and killing them next turn no matter what happens, right? Because we we had the minus the Tyvar. I, we should we should have I guess just kept the cast Realmwalker before we minus the Tyvar. I suppose. Okay. Uh, game three. Let's. Yes, the spell sky definitely gains stock as a cauldron. Maybe we want the fourth cauldron. That's yeah, okay. Was that the blue mana for spell sky? Yeah, Agatha's Soul Cauldron allows you to spend mana for activated abilities as if it were mana of any color, including blue. I've been playing Gaia's Anthem the sideboard to deal with those cards. Yeah, Ga Gaia's Anthem like isn't good against Fury like. If you, like you spend two mana to play this anthem and then fury like scam fury still kills all of your creatures it's like people have been like i think coping really hard with like I, we've heard guys anthem suggested before like it's with the it just it just isn't it isn't what you need it to be i think i'm gonna get basic forest here kind of a weird game but i have um so i can turn my uh, Sentinels into mana elves, and my life total is kind of low. And I think like my life total is low enough. They're just sending burn at me, not my face. So I don't want to. I don't have time to cast this. Okay. Um, we attack first. So I can't cauldron first. It's a little unfortunate. Skull cracks me down to ten. They've got three cards left. Seeing the next card drawn, okay. You can do that. Down to seven. <clears throat> Our next card is. Tyvar Jubilant Brawler! If we can't cast. <laughs> um, suppose we're just going to... Agatha's Soul Cauldron... Put a counter on Nettle Sentinel, one of the Sentinels, and just attack. We could leave the Sentinels back, since if we draw another... One mana out for like generating mana. Let's see, this is seven. I think, we, I think we don't tap these. Need them to make mana. We can also block like a goblin guard or something. Hmm. 
Yeah, I can update the box. It looks like I did it for the command, but I didn't do it for the extension. Okay, that is a goblin guide or something. I've been loving Moxfield though. Moxfield's been so sick. Okay. Um, that's it. Okay, I do have to tap the Nettle Sentinel for mana, mana, right? Is it is it ever positive mana to just cycle Azuri here? No, it's not. So this puts my opponent down to three. Okay, well, hopefully they can't burn me out. Very classic, classic situation, I suppose. I'm at seven, so like Boros Charm is probably gonna have to get into the mix. Um, yeah, so I'm dead, I'm dead to Searing Blaze and I'm dead to Boros Charm or I'm dead to any two burn spells. Um, although now they've decided to not put me dead to a Searing Blaze, so that's sick. Possible to cycle Azuri because you can use an Elvish Mystic for mana. Uh, I don't think that's how it works. Okay, we're two and one. Two and one. Maybe a six cyber card for this deck. Uh, this is kind of like a classic Elves hand. I might keep this on the draw. Listen, we're not doing too good if our turn one Elf dies, anyways. Another basic planes. Lo love to see it. Yeah, Hammer's Hammer's one of your best matchups by a lot. So happy, happy to play against Hammer twice. See what we draw. Best draw in the deck by a lot, probably. So I, I do need to leave a blocker back here, I, I would assume. But that's that's also easy enough. My if I cast another three drop here, either Azuri or Realm Walker, my Nettle Sentinel will at the least be untapped, and I'm going to go with the Realm Walker, so there's maybe another 1-mana green creature underneath here that would let us keep going. We do have a lot of 1-mana green creatures in the deck, after all. There's not one on top of my library, but we um, we get to pass. So if my opponent has uh, Land, Second Hammer, Shadow Spear, we die this turn. Otherwise, I think we should get a good chance of killing them next turn. Do need to play around natural second hammer. Maybe, maybe, maybe because we're losing this nettle sentinel, it's not going to be so so easy. Because if I can go Tyvar, then court, then court for Archdruid without activating my Tyvar, it should be pretty trivial. We'll see what happens. Are you supposed to see a top card before you pick your creature type? I don't. I think that that's a bug. Um, I think that you are not supposed to. That being said, uh, we're always picking out. <laughs> so I can go play one, two, three, four, five, but then I don't have enough green to play Tyvar. So maybe I have to go one, two, three, cast Tyvar. Cast Tyvar, one green floating, untap. Mm. Is there a different line besides Cord for Archdruid? Could Cord for Nettle Sentinel. Might be the best. Like resets the top and... I could also minus for another Nettle Sentinel. And I maybe just need to get a lot of power toughness into play here. There's another brick on top, which feels pretty bad. Really needed there to be an elf somewhere. You chose the type before Realm Walker hits the battlefield. Yeah, I know that's how you're supposed to. I think on Magic Online you see the, the, the card on top first. So if I get Corian Ranger, I can cast Azuri and then also block with not Nettle Sentinel. 
So I'm I'm go I'm gonna be dead to another hammer at this point, and sometimes you're, we're dead to another hammer, I guess. I can also block and I can I can block and double regen if I untap the Realm Walker, which I guess that actually puts me alive through second hammer shadow spear. Well, there's the second hammer, so I'm glad we played around it last turn at least. Um, can't be the third hammer plus the shadow spear, I guess. But I get to put five points of toughness. If I, I, I could also put a Zuri if I need to put seven, but five should be enough. Yeah, not really any difference between five and seven, I guess. How does Soul Cauldron Elves feel to, com to compare to Flame as Merfolk? I mean, super different. Elves is like a incredibly fast like combo deck and Merfolk is like a very slow, like tricky, interact hard to hard hard to interact with deck that gets to play like lots of interaction and instant speed plays. And we're probably play hot soup. What does hot soup do? One, equip creature can block whenever a creep creature is dealt damage. It can't be blocked. Dealt damage destroy it. Hmm. That's a fun one. <laughs> I agree worse than Shadow Spear. They go with the Construct. I, th I think that this likely means we're going to win. It would be very funny if they're just like... <laughs> very funny if they just also have Hammer in their hand and they're agonizing over this for so long. It means they don't have Pure Steel. Yeah, I would. it means they don't have much, I would guess. I wonder, if they, are they thinking about killing Tyvar here? Surely not. Yeah, okay, so we untap Realm Walker. Bouncing our forest. Suppose we could have paid, it doesn't really matter. Block, block, this is five toughness, so I'm taking less than 19, 17, right? Make three mana. Regenerate, regenerate. Maybe I need the top of my library to be kind to me. It doesn't look like we're going to be able to. At the very least, we can, like, we can Azuri on defense next turn, I think, to survive. Let's see what we, let's see what's underneath this stomping ground. Okay, that's a good start. So I'll play this. Um, seems fine to just tap two mana here. Korean Ranger's nice. So we can find an Archdruid before we brick. We should be winning. Tap here, tap here, tap here. We also may just be able to build up enough mana to win with Azuri against their 42 life. Certainly seems within the realm of possibility. Okay, that, that is one big thing with like soul cauldron is it's another brick for your for these turns which kind of stinks so if i were to tap three more elves i could untap one and then overrun and then i could untap two two more with only one more with the korean ranger because i only have one forest in play and i've already played my land so in theory i'm attacking with seven elves yeah seven elves uh, my opponent will block one of the two power base two power ones, and then they're gonna take six times four, which is twenty four. Yeah, not not nearly enough. Not nearly enough. So let's just untap here, and yeah, I mean I, I have the Tiber on tap, but I, I was counting that. I, was, I don't know. I was counting it. Um. Yeah, then I can double activate, right? At least double activate. No, 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 actually no. So I have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's then ten. Yeah, I can, I can, I can triple act. Ten, ten is. That's just double. Okay, well, it doesn't really matter. How about using overrun defensive weight and archer next turn? Yeah, I mean that's that is my only line. That's I'm just figuring that out. But yes, that that is the only line. 
And I'm not even, I'm not even sure. Like, the problem is I'm just going to, like, lose all my creatures, too. I don't, I think maybe just add. Because I can't, like, overrun and regen. Overrun once and regen? Is that enough? I have to, I have to absorb 21 damage here, plus block the construct, probably. I don't, I don't, like, I think I have to double overrun. Untap. So I can go tap three, tap three, tap three. I have ten mana for a double overrun. I guess I get to kill the Stoneforge though. Can I can I leave my Realm Walker back? How much do I actually have to put in front? So this is they're all gonna have plus six plus six. Yeah, so I should just be able to put these in front, right? Although, yeah, this is this will just eat here. I have to give plus six plus six, right? I can't give plus three plus three and regen. It should be more, way more than enough. Cool game. Plus three is enough already. Is it? Is is maybe it is. Oh no, you're right. It is. No, I can't just regen. I could, I could, I could play around a second hammer, but I can play around a second hammer, lose four creatures, or third hammer. Let's not, yeah. So six times four, yeah, yeah, six times four, just it's still twenty-four, huh? Yeah, I can play around third hammer by activating again. Um, I mean, they would have had the top deck it for turn. They they would have killed me with it last turn. So I, I think it makes sense to not and to just region one two re region. Oh, I've also messed up. I I needed to tap this for green. So I could regenerate five instead of four. I don't think it's really going to be that different. But. Can you overrun again? I, I can, but I could if I had tapped this for green instead of tapping it for this. But it's I think it's just better to save our stuff. We lose we lose here. Uh, we, we lose our elf, but that's not that big a deal, obviously. And this dies. <laughs> I think if they had another hammer, it would have been cast by now as well. Fun game. You could have untapped the elf with the other ranger. Yeah, but I've already used. I, I can't. I can't anymore because I don't. I don't have another forest in play. Yeah, it's just a lot going on. Opponent is uh, chewing on it. I assume we maybe actually don't lose these creatures. Yeah, we actually do. Do we? We only lose this, don't we? This is thirteen toughness. Seventeen toughness. Okay, so this one exactly dies. But let me keep this uh, token. Yeah, that's a, a glint leaf palace, not an overgrown tomb. My opponent is paying cost. I'm fuming. I'm fuming. No, opponent, you do not have a fucking Colossus hammer in your hand right now. There's no shot. There's no shot. What is this? Stop. Stop paying costs. No. But, like, what else could it be? Like, main deck March? Nganjo, okay, okay, that's fine. Wait, am I dead? Am I dead to Nganjo? I think I'm dead. Oh, no, I'm not dead. <sighs> wow. Wow. Okay, I, I I don't blame them for tanking that long on Nganjo there. That is definitely, like, a card that makes sense on tanking forever. They are... My, our opponent is super duper dead now. They are... Toast. I think. Activate overrun six times, attack with five creatures. Okay, math, math is now officially for blockers again. If this, is, if this isn't enough, I didn't want it enough. Hmm. 
Yeah, one more damage with the Agatha Soul Cauldron. Yeah, it's, it's like 100 damage. <laughs> okay, cool. What a game. What a game. Definitely our best matchup. Too much math today, though. Can we 5 0 the last time we played Owls or 2 1 up a game now? It's not a deck I'd recommend for a tournament, but it isn't like the most embarrassing deck to play. And it's really fun. It's really fun, too. You just have to like go to a therapist about the scam matchup, I think. That, that, my advice for the scam matchup as elves is to find a really good therapist. <laughs> find a really good therapist, and then you'll be okay. Yeah, I suppose I was good against the Garza. You could be bringing it. Yeah, the, 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 blocking with the, the blocking with the Zuri doesn't come up that often, but... The mysteries of racing prowess of the elves and the life gain ley line. Yeah, the elves players, they love the life gain ley line. They're like a spike. You got pro Orcish Bowmasters getting you down, Fury. Have you considered ley line of what the fuck ever? <laughs> It'll solve all your problems. Scam Fury does eight damage, who cares? Do you think one less Tyvar is a mistake? Tyvar is a good modern card at three mana. There are almost no good modern cards that you could just take one mana off the casting cost. Especially three modern three drops. You could just take a mana off the casting cost and it would be okay. Like, Tyvar is a, a good modern card at three mana. You, you just... I'm trying, to, I'm trying to think of an example of a, a card that is good... At three mana in modern, and you could shave a mana off, and it'd be fine. Maybe like Sword of Fire, nice. Although debatable if that card is good at three mana. Yeah, like the barrier to entry as as like a three mana spell in modern is really high. Endurance, yeah, endurance would be fucked up at two mana, dude. Are you kidding? <laughs> Fable Spyro, Adeline, Adeline would be fucked up at two mana. <laughs> you know, Co Cosmic Rebirth would be, I, I would be playing four Cosmic Rebirth in like every deck forever if it was one less mana. You had a second, second hammer. The Domain, Draw Spell, Shadow Prophecy, that card would be messed up at two. It's just, you just can't cut a mana off three drops. There's a big, it's just too much, y'all. It ain't, it ain't reasonable. So we can like cord for, we can cord for Realm Walker, we can cord for uh, Rex Sage, which seems like a bit safe, safer. Can cord for Azuri, but can I win if I cord for Azuri this turn? I don't like really think so. I can maybe can win, I can maybe make this Elvish Mystic 20 power. So I go, I go play Nettle Sentinel, Elvish Mystic, or Nettle Sentinel, Heritage Druid, tap Arch Druid for four, cast Tyvar. Uh, no, not even, not even close. How greedy is it to go for Realm Walker here? Incredibly greedy? Let's not. Okay. Let's just go for Rex Age. Or the Spark Ashiok. I mean, I would also. I don't. Know, it, it, I don't think there's an example of a card that is like kind of good at three mana. It wouldn't be just like oppressive at two. <laughs> Mirror Entity. I mean, that card's awful. So I think it would be fine. <laughs> yeah, the Coward Line for sure. Game three. Yeah, Valakid Awakening is maybe a good example, but mostly because it's a land. It would be very good though. It would be, you know, it's just, it's just not very realistic to like ever be like, to just like have the only change to be a, a card cut a man off the cost. I don't know. It's the bar to entry in modern is so high you just, it's just so hard to like find a perfectly balanced modern card or like 
it's or like take a card that's almost and then buff it and have it not be too good it's just the barrier is very <laughs> it's a hard barrier to get through um against hammer this is an interesting hand we have a ton of mana but we can't cast tyvar we have no interaction let's mulligan keep it's on the mold of five here's the real pick bring to light at four mana the card would be awesome at four mana it'd be so much better <laughs> wait my opponent mold to five and then use gemstone caverns okay I, I i do like the idea of gemstone caverns and hammer i think it's actually like probably pretty good like the first copy I don't think most Moldifives want to use it though. Trying out the caverns after you talked about it. Mm, I wish it looked better here. <laughs> Alright, let's pitch the Nettle Sentinel, I guess. Give him a heart, then give him the Force of Vigor. Could lose to a Stone Forge. That's their last card. It's not their last card. Guess I'll hold my fetch for Realm Walker. Doesn't even bother soaking up one damage. Oh! Okay. It's a good top deck. We'll prioritize extra damage over Realm Walker here. Also a good top deck. So if they make a token, I attack with everything, they're dead. So that's good. Listen, if they're a fan of the channel, they should want me to win on stream, huh? <laughs> they should want me to draw well. overkill all right well we're playing elves we did lose the scam round one but it was, it was, it was kind of close <laughs> it was all it was almost close we won game one uh let's get a 4-1 prediction going last time we played elves we 5 0 i don't know this deck is just not that embarrassing to play y'all it's just not that embarrassing to play as long as you can figure out a coping mechanism for the scam matchup if you're like Yes, I just need my ley line of whatever the card's called, or I need my Sylvan Anthem, or you know my cope and my cope of you know. Okay, we'll keep this. That's on a mold of six. Yeah, but there is a prediction line. We got like a minute, ten seconds left. Ah, no! <laughs> Fuck! It's goblins. <laughs> Listen, we already paid the scam tax once. We already paid the scam tax once. <laughs> you want to lead on land and elves over heritage druid here, so you can go war master into druid into uh, make three mana. Has cauldron been relevant? Uh, not really. It hasn't. I mean, it was like in my gold fishing it was kind of okay, but it hasn't been super good here. I I so like the the big theory too is that you you want to be replacing um you want to be replacing the sorry what's the fucking card called. A leaf crown leaf crown visionary the new the new lord that was really good it's no longer no longer a good option because of bowmaster it's just so like you just lose if you play that card against bowmaster um so i was thinking this cauldron could be the replacement for it and maybe it still is but maybe maybe the jury's still out yeah Ty tyvor is really really good in elves it's very good Go goblins is i think still a bad matchup actually like we just kind of we have a hard time racing the snoop combo and then they like sometimes play fury post board don't really have any good answer to the snoop combo i guess so they're going for harbinger i imagine we see snoop maybe they get like another expert or something yeah, dual deck goblins versus elves. They get a ringleader. Okay, we'll take that. 
Like, I think when L, when Goblin starts to go for, like, the outgrind you game plan, that's usually when you're pretty happy as elves, because you, you kind of can't race them super well, so you, you, like, need them to be on this game plan instead. Is there another line here besides just cast Archdruid? I can, I can cast Elvish Mystic, then I can go, I then I have four mana left, which, and then I can cord for... And Cord for Corian Ranger, untap an elf, and then cast Archdruid, and then I have Corian Ranger in play, but it's just mostly seems better to hold the cord. So their hand is Goblin Ringleader, presumably a land, because I can't imagine they get Ringleader without a land, and then a mystery card. Goblin War Chief. I'm so happy my opponent cast put like they just can't they just lose now if they cast Ring Leader. Which is their last card, because they can't they can't expert anymore. Game over. I really do not recommend registering this card in, in Goblins. I, I played it in the past and just just ain't it. So they get a Harbinger, an expert, and a Kiki Jiki. If they just left the vial on two and tried to ringleader into munitions expert, we were certainly in worse shape. Here I'm going to take six with a smile on my face and almost definitely untap and win. I think I'm going to go for brown walker here. Could maybe like leave this untapped, but having the having the shuffle here is really really a big deal. And you're casting as many owls before our opponent gets to, or oh, sorry, before we tap the arch is a big deal too. Like I'm gonna use this on the summoning stick elves here. Um, game game should just be over. Let me go ahead and just fetch again here, as like general sequencing. Wow, yeah, they just become more and more dead every moment that passes. Maybe try to just get an achievement for how much damage we get to do here. Alright, so let's tap Elvish Church Druid. Tap this for the Court of Calling. One, two, three. Grab Azuri. Untap Arch Druid with Corian Ranger. Which, you know. This taps for a bit here. Okay, maybe concede. They're going to like negative 30 or something. Turn four kill. Um, I don't appear to have like an answer for their combo. Um, so like, I think I'm gonna cut a cauldron for a forge tinder and hope for the best. I, I just kinda can't beat a com fast combo ham. Answer their vial. Yeah, I mean, the, if I bring in like oof, I like like I could cut my cauldrons or something. But I'm just gonna like pretend like the combo doesn't exist. And if they don't have a combo hand, I can win sometimes. And if they do, I can't really win, especially on the draw on the play. Maybe you could win. Don't have uh, it's you can win on turn three with the stack. It's tough, but you can if you just turn two arch druid. Yeah, spell skite doesn't stop it. Yeah, spell skite kiki jiki targets creature you control. So spell sky can't uh, validly interrupt it. I'll keep this though. This hand is a land away from a very very fast hand. Um, we're just cauldron at the elves. In theory, what it adds is like resilience to removal, like turning like nettle sentinel specifically or any creature into arch druid, heritage druid, azuri seems seems interesting to me. And like it's been like I didn't I didn't really like draw a lot of conclusions from playtesting. So you know playtesting, which was mostly just gold fishing. <laughs> um, but it was gold fishing well enough for, for me to pop it up here. Is Crater Hoof Nugget as one of no it's 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 awful. You just you you just want to play any number of Azuri over any number of Crater Hoof in modern elves. There's like no good reason to play Crater Hoof instead. Like you're not gonna cord for it, you you know, you have no no real synergy with it. There's just there's you know, it's, that's all nonsense. Mog Fanatic has entered the revealed zone. Classic goblins versus elves.
Go, Nettle Sentinel, go. You can do it. Come on, Nettle Sentinel. I mean, they only have two cards in their hand, too, and they don't have a Snoop. Just actually land away from <laughs> being ahead here. No, the chat's not in sub-only mode. You just probably asked a question that got filtered by mod settings. Running again the deck today? I don't know. We're like four and a half hours into the stream. Getting up there, you know. Okay. So they have no cards left in their hand. Our question mark shadow band. Do you have like the word... Qu question mark is definitely not shadow band. I, you probably have the word band in your... Like, I, I, you, like every other chatter, is like, Spike, can my the card I hate be banned, or can the card I really like be unbanned? I, I imagine it was your comment, and I got censored. Doc, with the six months in advance, thank you, thank you welcome back. <laughs> uh, sorry, not welcome back, welcome for the first time, six months in advance, let's freaking go. Yeah, we played uh, Invasion of Alara with uh, Up the Beanstalk before it was actually pretty good before when their first league and then had like a worse second league um so i played dwinen's elite they'll kill my quarian ranger in response but then my elvish warmaster gets to live which is pretty good it also might not yeah it was pretty sweet the deck like the deck was also just incredibly fun obviously they have a lot of good top decks but they can just brick for a little while classic flood versus screw uh oh, it's a snoop. They shuffle. At least we get to know what's happening next turn. Death. Well, not exactly death. Cause they have they have to they have to go on my next instep, infinite tap snoops. So let's see, if I draw a land we can keep playing. Okay. I asked what Cauldron does elves. Yeah, I, 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 did, I did answer that question. I did answer that question just a second ago. I guess I should have attacked too, huh? Yeah, so... Oh, that's, this actually... They're just going to get to copy the expert. Sorry, this isn't going to do that much. But they're going to kill my Archdruid, so maybe I should have taken a different line. Can they just always cut everything before you make a board? No, they just get to, they just, like, they're they're drawing the Kiki. They're drawing the Kiki. Although, I guess they could just take the Kiki up to five, copy Expert. Yeah, we'll concede. We, we can't beat Kiki plus Expert, actually. Okay, Dean threw in the play. Even the play, we play a Rex Age or a Cauldron. We'll keep in the second Cauldron, since that's kind of what this is. That's not something I need to do. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not sure then. Why is Go goblins? I I agree that goblins is a good modern deck. I think it you know it's it's one that play it's 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 kind of a hard deck to play. There's a lot of lines that are maybe a little bit unintuitive, and, but yeah, people don't really gravitate towards it for one reason or another. Elves is not a deck that mulligans to five very well. We do have certainly have some functional mold to fives. Cauldron's probably pretty good here. Put back Azuri in an elf, I guess. We're in a pretty reasonable seven. Yeah, we, we've had like like one like reasonable cauldron game and like one kind of bad one, and then it's been it's been breaking our realm walker. I think a bit more than it's been helping us. Don't know. I don't. I I don't know if this is like a card you want to play this many copies of in the deck. Yeah, they're making a bunch of goblin stuff they're slinging, or uh, Mog or Fnatic on top. They could still kill me. Okay, I do have a white card in the deck, so I guess we get Temple Garden. Deck for one. Well, I didn't board in the... Oof. May have been a winning line to do so. This is definitely a, a mana positive for core. This is going to let me core for two um, if I want. 
So maybe maybe I should just cord for another War Master on their turn and then go aggro. I could also I don't think we're trying to save this for Rex Age. Yeah, I think I think another spot, just kind of exactly how the matchup goes. If they don't have the combo, you can play a game and be fine, but if they have the combo, you just kinda of can't race it. Vile on one, put nothing into play. Then munitions expert, my land or elves, deal. Take that deal, then my cauldron gets to turn stuff into a land or elf, which is okay. Just gonna get another war master. Where wherever wherever they are. Elite elite. Elite elite. Where are my war masters? I'm not only playing two war masters in this deck, am I? Oh no, I am. I meant to have four war master two elite. And somehow when when we were changing the deck at the beginning, we must have switched it back. Well that's kind of embarrassing. How do we not know? We've been, we've also drawn Warmaster a lot this league. It's funny. Yeah, I meant to cut these for the. I meant to cut these instead. Oops. Yeah, that was not intentional. That being said, I think we're gonna win anyways. But just yeah. Sorry. Um. Yeah, I'll just flood the board with next turn. We're short. We're, we have like one less elf than we would have had otherwise. Yeah, classic finding out <laughs> game three, match five. I'm sure one Twitch chatter has noticed the whole time. They can't really have almost anything. They can have uh, Plague Engineer. I remember when Goblin Goblin combo like was first a thing. I was playing like four Plague Engineers on my sideboard because I thought the mirror was going to be so popular. Plus, but Jordan, like, yeah, we would have two more tokens in play, I guess. Yeah, I think my opponent is probably composing. Yeah, Chain Whirler. No, they're dead. I beat just Chain Whirler here, actually. This card advantage is not an issue. Well, you, you play the new Elvish Leaf Crown Visionary. Leaf Crown Visionary was really good in this deck. I think is now like pretty close to unplayable. And the idea is that Cauldron is replacing Leaf Crown Visionary in the shell. Uh, I think you could probably... I probably would... After this league, I doubt I would really want to play more than like one copy of this card in the deck, though. Uh, but, but I think maybe you could just lean... You could go back up to... You could do something like this. Uh, maybe maybe even play fourth Realm Walker over first Cauldron and just just lean back in on Realm Walker as your card advantage engine instead of Leaf Crown Visionary, which is what we had done in the past. Okay, opponent hits us with the GGs and we four we four won with Elves anyways, despite Cauldron not looking that good. Um, we did hit our best matchup twice. We did pay the scam scam tax, but the last two times we played on stream, we five out and four one. That's it's weirdly not that embarrassing of a deck to register. No, you can't combo with a not summoning six snoop without like, you know, a way to give it haste, so we're feeling pretty safe there. Okay, um that's gonna be it for me today. Almost five hours into the stream, kinda hard to start another league at this point. I'll be back tomorrow. I think we're gonna start with the start with the blue red storm deck, maybe play like another Ha <laughs> ha